Hey there, and welcome to a little bit of a different video, but I think we're both pretty excited about it. This was one of the exact type of things that we wanted to be able yes. to share when we rebranded the channel a few months ago. We do a lot of overlanding and we wanted to share more of the backstory with different things. This video is all about our saga of heat because you're cold yes. and you like heat. Mm -hmm. So let's tell you where we failed, what we've tried and where we're going. All right, so here's our original setup. This lovely diesel heater. It worked great when it worked, but we ran into problems with it and they were consistent problems. But before we get into those, let's see how we had this one set up. Yeah, because I was pretty stoked about this setup. Yeah. I wished it had worked more consistently because I was, I was happy with this build out. Yeah. And I think it's worth sharing even though we did have problems in case you're considering your own. Look at where we went uh, and maybe you can help uh, with, with where you could have some trouble. Yep. Um, I'm going to start on the intake side and keep in mind you're going to see two intakes here and that is because a diesel heater, gas heater, this type of heater that is typically found in over the road trucks, RVs, buses, uh, really anything where they don't want to use the running engine to generate heat, they want another, another heat source, this type of heater is used. It's really cool that they use a heat exchanger so the combustion gas never crosses with the air that you're going to be heating with. Right. Um, so that means you have two intakes and two exhausts. This intake, which is a dirt bike slash ATV one inch inlet because it works well with the tubing, or I guess it'd be, yeah, it's an inlet, yeah. the port that you would hook up, it worked well. Uh, it was just, an, uh, uh, there's like a spring in here. This is that intake for the combustion gas. Right. Of course, to combust, we also need fuel. Here is my fuel port. This is a little bulkhead fitting with a, this is a, a quick disconnect push in to keep it from leaking. Uh, I'll show the line that we would use to hook up with this here in a bit. Mm -hmm. And then once combusted, the heat exchanger side, it needs to breathe as well. So this is the fresh air inlet. This is right. the inlet that will end up up in the tent uh, right. with warmed air. One extra thing you see on this side is this electrical connector. I've got the little cap already down here. This um, is where I brought in basically two, two things. Actually, one's in, one's out. The 12 volts in that the heater needs to run with, as well as out and up to the tent. Um, I had an umbilical that went off for the small little controller so that we could run what that looked like. Okay. Um, on this back side, I'll talk about this uh, when we show you the inside more, but this is basically a vent so the box itself can have fresh air. It can get rid of some of the right. buildup of heat or any fumes that build up in there. So it's just there to look pretty. It doesn't actually do anything special. And then uh, after the inlet, we've gone through the combustion. Here are our two outlets. This outlet is the heated air out that's going to go up to the tent. This is actually version two. It was an emergency thing. Yep over the weekend, and I'll talk about that. I had originally used this uh, Amazon coupler that really worked quite well for like a dryer vent. Yeah. Um, but it's 100% plastic. It's, it's actually called AC. It was an AC and heat fitting for a three inch tube, but it, it couldn't handle the heat that uh, comes out of these heaters, especially this close to the heater. It is a very high temp exhaust outlet. So if you're building your own, look for metal, or if you go with a, a high end fitting, like a, I can't remember the name of it, Erspotcher, Aberspotcher, something like that, the Webasto, Webesto, um, they use a fiber resin, one of these, that will help it conform even when it gets to that tent, uh, up to that temp. This one didn't, uh, and it started to deform, it yes. melted, not, not like melted got gooey, but it was enough that the fittings wouldn't stay tight because I'd tighten it up and it would just literally stretch to the new setting. I'd tighten it and stretch. So I had to skip it and go to this metal one. And then over here is the combustion side exhaust outlet. This is a marine grade flange um, that kind of goes along with that. Right. So anyway, that's all of the outsides of the box. Lana, I'm going to let you talk about the inside. But um bum all right so let's take a look at the inside of this how we've got this set up open this up all right so here is our chinese heater um it is oriented like it should be one of the suggested ways which is 90 degrees out um, it's either upright or 90 and we've got the inlet for the air for the combustion coming into that next to it we've got the fuel inlet which routes around here's the fuel pump and the inlet over here for the fuel. And then on the exhaust side, here's our version two 
of the exhaust for the heat, heated air, and you can see the muffler back in there for the exhaust on the combustion side of things. The other thing you probably see in there is the diesel. There is diesel fuel in the bottom of this unit, and that is one of the problems we were running into. Okay, so some of the problems. When this baby worked, <laughs> it worked great. We've, said, nice. we've said that. Yeah. It was really, it was lovely, which is why we're so vested and still yeah. trying to sort all of this out. But here's what we experienced. We, we, uh, we would start this thing. It would run for, at most, two and a half, three hours. Yeah. It would start to flutter out. And when it did, you'd start to, you could hear it in the exhaust. You kind of hear like a plane in, like, yeah. you just hear it running. And then you'd hear this sort of, like it would stutter and you just knew it was starting to almost flood out yeah and then that would get worse it would get worse it would get worse and ultimately the pump would actually ramp up trying to throw fuel at it i think it made it worse yeah and eventually it would go out and before it would fault out the pump would run for several minutes before it would give up and then that would flood it so poorly that that extra fuel would end up in the bottom right. of the case which you see there that's now and we would have more diesel smell coming into the inlet or the outlet air up into the tent because one of the things we found out this lovely heater is not sealed well enough to keep the exhaust fumes from getting into the air part that was going up into the tent so we would get the diesel fuel which some of people do like the diesel tinge I'm okay with it but not when I'm trying to sleep and that's too much yeah, so let me, let me, I'm going to reiterate that because it's a really important point that was an oversight on my part. I knew in my research on building one of these that the muffler that we have installed in here right. was not sealed. I knew that it would allow some exhaust fumes to leave it. Right. That's what this port back here was all about. Was just, I didn't care if some diesel got in the box because right. who cares? It'll eventually get fresh enough air out. That would all be completely okay. What I didn't think about was that the non-combustion side, the heat exchanger side, is not sealed on this heater, maybe any of them, I don't know. Right. Um, but on this heater for sure, it is not yeah. sealed enough that when this got, when the box inside got full of diesel fumes, um, it, made, it, it made its way into the side it wasn't supposed to still, <laughs> and we had a diesel smell up in the tent. And I'm not even sure if that didn't get so bad that it could have been part of the problem. Yes with it stumbling. Yes. I really don't know. I just know that at the end, uh, this didn't work that well. Correct. Anyway, this is the heater itself. Yep. I'm gonna take a time out here. We're gonna reset and I wanna show you some of the rest of the accessories that made this a complete and working system. Yep. Okay, so this tote and this tank makes up the rest of the magic. So in this tote, we would store, there's a nice little spot in the truck that it works out quite yep. well. In order to get the in, I bought this VP racing jug, not a plug mm -hmm. for a VP racing or anything, but they sell these small fuel jugs um, that has this, uh, it's got a threaded port in the top of it. So Alana, if you would unthread that, basically yep. what it would allow me to do is this is the fuel line, it's a four millimeter, um, actually I, I do a lot of automation, so this is like a pneumatic, I bought some pneumatic polyurethane Ooh. tubing uh, that would work with the fuel. So from the tank, I have this copper tube on a compression fitting. I custom made that fitting. I tapped the other side so that this goes down into the tank, down into the diesel. Um, it's all threaded up here with some reducers and, and some silicone and stuff. It was actually fuel safe thread sealant. I didn't want to use Teflon. I didn't have the right fuel stuff for Teflon when I made it, right. so I used a, a, a material that was good for it. I've got a little ball valve on here, and the reason that's important is that once the little pump had pulled the head pressure up, and I had fuel to this point. I never wanted to break this vacuum. I wanted to leave that in there so that every time I started the pump, I didn't have to pull this fuel all the time. I would really only have to deal with that when I refilled the jug. And with this capacity, we could easily run a, a, a couple week trip because these type of heaters use right. very, very uh, little fuel. This little red thing is actually just a plug in here. Um, and then I would hook the line I talked about earlier with the fuel filter to that line over there. Now I knew hooking and unhooking would create some air pockets. And what we experienced with that was our first ignite almost always failed. Correct. It would start to run and just about the time it got running, the air 
pocket that was created made its way to the heater and it would it would fault out right we would just reset it and restart it and it, and then it worked really quite well right this head pressure and this siphon piece might have actually contributed to the combustion problems i'm not sure but uh anyway that's the way we brought fuel into it and then off of that marine port that i showed you earlier this was just a, a spare piece of exhaust tube flexible exhaust tube you can see it's actually well it's, it's yellow but it's blued a little bit uh, would be the term for it on how hot this baby burns and I would just bend this and point this to a place away as much as I could right. on that combustion smells like diesel. A plus side of the diesel is mosquitoes don't like it. Yes. Uh, and then off of that electrical connector this wire harness which is a bit of overkill here the yellow in this setup um, is the power and then this is the little control unit that we would use that would go up into the tent so that we could right. control our temperature and how hard we wanted the heat to run. So again, this connector here, um, I would connect to the box and then I would run one either to the cigarette hookup in the truck. I actually have an adapter that hooks up to our seven pin harness on the hitch on the receiver right. of our truck as well if I run or want, run or want, want to run off of truck battery. Or we can hook it up to our jackery. Correct. So depending on what we ever wanted to do there. One last connection that needed to be made. We took this little outlet and we hooked it up to this um, dryer vent. plastic lined dryer vent. This hooked up to that other port. And then this brought the warm, wonderfully dry air up into the tent. Yep. So the rest of this is spare parts. I got some extra filter material, some little hooky doos, some extra line. This thing came with a little remote control that we never once used. Yep. Um, so the rest of this is just, you know, an extra tube, basically everything that we needed to keep the heater going. Uh, and it worked okay, right? but it was a little cumbersome to yes. get all this stuff out. You know, uh, if you've watched the channel, a lot of times we're getting up really early in the morning to try to go for me to get a photo right. someplace. And this was a lot um, to have to fiddle fart around. And sometimes right. we actually decided just to bundle up rather than run right. the heat because of the teardown process. So. Um, You've heard about our problems. You've seen where we're coming from and why mm -hmm. we needed to do something. So now let's uh, let's get into what the heck we're going to do. Okay, so here's the unit that we bought. Uh, it is a Wabasto Airtop 2000 STC gasoline, petrol style. Yeah, they actually have a different character. I don't remember what it is, but they make this unit in two variants. Yes. Gasoline, petrol, mm -hmm. or diesel. So if you remember, we mentioned the other one was diesel. That's the only thing that was diesel that we carried. Not our generator, that's gasoline. Our truck, that's gasoline. So we were literally only carrying that gasoline jug, or I'm sorry, that diesel jug yeah. for that heater. Yeah, so this is nice that we've now switched to gasoline because right. the, it'll be a common fuel type. So if I'm carrying a Rotopax or mm -hmm. some other extra fuel storage right. uh, for the generator or for anything, we can also now fill up the heater. Yes. Yeah. This is the unit that we purchased from Heat So, I think is the yes. name of the yes. website. Not a plug for them. I just order it like everybody else. And this is exactly how it came. When you order a unit from them, you get a few options. You get one, how do you want to mount it? whether you want gas, whether you want petrol, uh, and also what type of controller that you want to use. They have a simple design, which is a rheostat or potentiometer, basically low to high. They also have a seven-day programmer. Hello, Skycam. Mm -hmm. um, they have a seven-day programmer that you can get uh, that gives you a bit more features, like the exact right. temperature that you would like to output. And then the box. Yeah, so when it comes to mounting, they also, uh, one of the options is a box to give it a containment. So right. before we get to that, here is everything. Ta-da! <laughs> so this is exactly what we got with that setup. Inlet to outlet again, we get this, this length of both intake and exhaust tube. So you would cut this for off for anything that you need for the, the air that's coming into whatever you want to heat. Mm -hmm. And then we get this plastic intake tube, this uh, metal exhaust tube, a muffler uh, for the combustion side. This uh, harness is still stuffed in here. That actually clips out of the way and that runs the fuel pump. You get fuel line. Uh, you get a wire harness for the control. It also splits out one for the controller, one that would go to your power source. You get uh, an assortment of these, uh, these fittings, some brackets, really everything you need 
to make this go. It even includes, and I don't see it here, uh, it even includes all of the hardware um, that you would do for a typical install. An important note here, a typical install or that they are expecting is going permanently into a unit. It's going to be installed into an over the road truck. It's going to be installed into a van, into a bus, into some vehicle and we are trying to do something that's a little bit portable. So we're gonna have to make some modifications here, especially be because the box wasn't all that we, would, that we had hoped and dreamed. One thing I want to mention though, uh, everything here, the tube, the flanges, yes. the pump, the exhaust, Butter, the clamps, everything. everything here is vastly better quality. You yes. can tell by feeling it, you can tell by the way the exhaust bends, the weld quality, the, everything about it is higher quality and it should be. Heat kit to heat kit comparison, this is 10 times the cost of that Chinese unit that I showed you earlier. It was about 200 bucks and then we probably had another 200 into that as you saw it, maybe yeah. a bit more. Actually, I probably added, we were probably $500 all into that right. heat setup. Right now, we, we are like, oh, I don't even remember what this was. I'll put it down below. We'll look at the receipt. Yeah, I don't remember. I want to say it was close to $2,000, yeah. um, if not $2,400. I don't know. I'm lying to you. Uh, so look at, the, look at the number <laughs> below is exactly what we have paid for. What is here? Yes. <laughs> My voice did a weird thing. Okay, I'm going to move this aside for just a second because this mounting box, which is nice, very nice stainless steel. It's all stainless, so you don't have to worry about painting or anything. But right. my intent was to try to use this instead of doing the plastic box that I did before. Um, this is when you would mount. This is not completely weather sealed, so it needs to be in something. So if you were mounting under your vehicle, this is something that you could do to keep it out of the bulk of the weather right. uh, rather than this being inside the, the living space or where you were going to heat. But it's got some flaws that actually keeps me from being able to use it. Correct. So if I if I show you here, um, and I know we're a little space a little short on space, but um, I'm going to flip this upside down and sort of put this in where it would line up. So it's it's 180 out of the way that it would normally go in. But one of the things I want to point out is how close this is. That's because the holes and ports that are in the bottom of this box. Um, they're, they're put right squarely in the middle, but the heat the heater itself is not straight in the middle. You can see it's off. So if I go to now put something out here, it, it actually, it doesn't, the, own, the fittings that they supplied me with actually don't fit where I would need to put it. It'd be fine on this side, but not on this side. So they really needed to go ahead and call a side. Like it, right. it, you can't have this this hole in the bottom be dead center. Like it, it needed to be biased one way so that the heater could sit dead center. So now if I set the little heater aside, the other issue here when I put the lid back on, you'll see pretty quickly. I'm not sure how the heck, like it, it is a slotted mounting hole and I did look at the very most extreme of the slot, it probably wouldn't be in way of that flange. Um, but it's a it's a pretty bad overlap as is. And if I were to raise it up that that amount, it's really it's it's barely covering anything anymore anyway. Like it's just barely on. It's I don't know. Um, at the end of the day, this this setup seemed to be a little bit flawed. So. Um, that's okay because if you remember in the other setup, well, it's not okay because I kind of wasted money here, <laughs> but uh, I'd probably been better off just getting a mounting plate, right. but I'm, we're going to have to do something yeah. else. Uh, we're coming up to that. If you remember, we had that plastic tote that had all of our, good, our other goodies in it. It had the wiring harness to go up to the tent. It had the, uh, the duct tube and some of those other things uh, that would be normally be included in the kit. I still want that. Like I'm trying to make this thing portable, this, which means I need a place to store. Yeah, because this only took care of this, which leaves all of this a place to be either permanently mounted or toted around with us. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I knew we were going to have to do something different with the fuel because this, this tube that it comes with, again, they're intending on you mounting this permanently in a vehicle. So you right. would drop that into the fuel tank for that vehicle. Right. We're not doing that. I knew I'd have to come up with something there, no biggie. But 
I don't like this would just be flopping in the breeze and this is like I don't I did there was no setup here for the rest of it so we've got to back up and punt yes. and I think I have a cool setup that's going to work um, where we don't actually use this that Correct. it came with at all so let us clean up um, and then I'll show you that okay okay so here's the hodgepodge solution uh, that's going to make this a total setup so I picked up this 20 slash 21 inch basic steel toolbox mm -hmm. and it is going to replace the mounting box so I'm going to go ahead and drill some holes in the side of it and in the bottom of it for this flange here so it will be mounted vertically correctly a beautiful thing about this is that this little heater will fit completely inside the storage tray uh, that is here so it all fits uh, below below the, the tool line and that will leave this top mount then that will completely hold things like the, the tubing and all that kind of stuff. I may have to cut the handle part out here or do something different so that it fits in here. Uh, I'm not too worried about all that, but it gives us a place to store all of that. When it comes to the heater and getting the air out, remember we melted that plastic thing before. So we picked up this uh, Nishimoto. These, this is actually like a flange for a turbo yeah. setup or something. So it's supposed to be high heat, but because I know how hot this outlet can be, what I've actually done is stuffed a piece of, of, the, of the tubing or the ducting that the unit came with and that's to help create a little bit of a, a buffer here or a little bit of a heat absorption. It also makes this fit much better over this unit. Then I'm going to adapt to literally a piece of steel DOM tubing that I picked up. Uh, and this is then gonna come out of the box for me to slip this over and then run the air uh, with this up into the tent. So that all makes sense. On the air inlet side of the heater, I think I'm just gonna take that port and let it go ahead and just breathe right fresh air it. right off into the side of the unit. I haven't decided if I'm gonna run a port off or not. My big issue there, um, my big issue there really is the weather, weather sealing is just, I don't wanna be drawing in a bunch of moisture because these little things actually move a lot more air than you would expect. Okay, then when it comes to fuel, I picked up this little dude. Um, like I say, we're motorheads. We've done, we've, we've lived a lot of lives and uh, we've, there's some old rat rods and stuff. It's a little teeny tiny 1.8 gallon fuel tank. Mm -hmm. What I love about this is this port, it has a port on the bottom where I can go straight to a barb for our fuel line. Right. Uh, and I, I feel quite confident that I'll be able to get this 100% sealed. And that is the number one complaint when you use those, the, any of the standard things. So the cool thing is this will actually have the more fuel that's in here will actually provide pressure to want to prime that pump. And once it's primed, I'll never lose prime with the setup. Right. So you say, well, how's this? Oh, and this came with uh, these brackets. Yep. Uh, so this is going to go in here. Remember all those flippy flappy things we were worried about? Well, this whole shooting match, I'm going to put like up on stilts. <laughs> uh, so this whole shoot match I'm going to put up on stilts, I'm going to put this, this kind of down here underneath it, and I'm going to rigid fix all of the, all of the, uh, the, the intake, the fuel, fuel pump, yeah. the, all that kind of stuff on an aluminum plate and, uh, you know, just weld up basically a little stilt. So this is much bigger uh, when it comes down to it because we're probably going to be, you know, about this tall maybe a little bit wider and I say that just so that I can have clean access to the uh, to the fuel tank yeah. uh, although one thing I didn't consider your live action you're seeing me brainstorm is I could mount it off the side because it's really not any thicker that way okay. so we're not sure exactly we're not sure exactly <laughs> Um, what the setup is going to be for all this, but this is the raw parts. And today, we're, finally, we're to the point where we're out in the shop and we're going to start throwing this stuff yeah. together. I hope to get that done right here shortly. So, um, time lapse. You ready for a time lapse? Let's start making some right. stuff. Here we go.
All right, well, this is as far as uh, this is as far as we're getting here this evening, and we're really uh, pretty close. So, uh, underneath the heater, you can see where the heater is hooked up there. Uh, the exhaust is really a pretty short run. We did go ahead and add the muffler in here, uh, and then we'll hook up a little extension tube uh, to go off this way. The intake is pretty tidy. Uh, this little plastic mount works out real well, and then behind it you can see the fuel pump that is wired up here. Um, the Webesto, Webasto, Webasto, however you want to say it, it comes with like this huge extension cable that I didn't use. I basically rewired this up where it came straight out of here to here. Um, and another note about the pump, I'm, I'm finding misleading information or mix match information. Um, in the manual that I found here, it wanted this pump level. The Chinese pump, and if you go to look at some other places, um, the pump, they want between 15 and 30 degrees angled up. I have it just a little bit up. I'm probably going to loosen that bolt and tweak that up uh, just a little bit more. Uh, as far as the intake goes, here's uh, it's just a little grill on the side and then the heat output. There's that steel tube I talked about that I was going to use. Uh, inside the lid here, it's still a little, it's still a little chaotic. Uh, so on the intake, what we decided to do is rather than plumbing this, I just decided to go ahead and put, we pinched up a little bit of filter. We're going to let this breathe natural since there is nothing really inside anymore. And then, uh, and then on the exhaust, there's the uh, little coupler that I talked about earlier. Um, switching over to the the steel pipe up to three inch so I can use that duct. Now one thing I'll show you here down inside, uh, there's that little double sleeve thing. So you can actually see the heat exchanger there and then the, the double sleeve. So today, well tomorrow, because <laughs> it's kind of kind of late, but um, tomorrow I need to finish up the wiring. This whole big loom here, really ultimately what this amounts to is I put some fuses in this baby and I just need to hook up positive and negative. And then this side uh, goes out to the controller. And then the other thing, I have to run first thing in the morning um, to the hardware store because um, the back, I kind of have this, uh, have it kind of mocked up. Here's where the fuel jug, this is all, uh, this is all still very loose here because I've got to get a fitting. So this is just, this isn't all the way hooked up here, but basically that's, that's the way the fuel jug will sit. So I got to get some gas, get some fittings. But for now, it's uh, for now with this dude, it's it's bourbon o'clock. We're uh, it's very late, so we're gonna get some sleep. All right, well here it is, maiden startup. It took two tries to get the pump primed um, using the jackery there, and you can see now that it's lit. Where it's a uh, hundred percent on, like it's full tilt. 27 30 ish watts um, yeah you can see the tray I, I uh, modified it here's the duct that uh, in formal use will hook up to there got clamps all these ties to tie everything up yeah it uh, we're gonna let it run for 15 minutes we're ready to go camping in all some right, cold. well there you go it basically started right up on the second ignite the first time it did fault out we did no pre-priming of the pump with our setup it was actually a little difficult uh, but the second time we could hear the pitch of it change yep uh, if you're not familiar with this type of heater the tick that you can sort of hear in the background uh, that's quite common with this uh, i might add some dynam uh, some dynamite or some sound deadening to the aluminum plate what we have found is by the time we're in the tent and everything, it's actually a little nice little tick uh, that kind of puts us to sleep. So it's not too much of a big deal for us. It's usually the, the neighbors, if we're in a campground, uh, that would get upset. This went pretty well, but uh, a note that I will make on this install is that uh, Wabasto, Wabasto sends you a CD for directions and installations and everything. Yes. And I don't know who in the world in 2022 has that i have somewhere at my office uh, like a usb to cd rom drive to read those but dear lord 2022 and for this much money just give me a pdf download give me a qr code i'll happily go download right. it or print it i mean i'd rather you not use the paper honestly but right. it there was literally i could not find the directions on the web 
uh, with my searching. What I did find though is a lot of people that have used these, both the diesel and petrol variants, the gasoline variants, uh, and that really got us through. A caveat that we learned the hard way is there is a connector, the connector we thought we would be running to this little controller um, ends up not running to the little controller. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and get the rheostat because that's just the way the wire harness works uh, for our setup. Right. And I think it'll be simpler up in the tent because my 15 minutes of working with this little timer programmer thing, I'm already a little frustrated with it. And I just, I just literally want to climb up in the tent or wherever I'm at and turn uh, where I want to go. So we will probably tweak that. Yep. Uh, do you have any other comments? No. I so far, so good. So We're far, good. so far, so good. It's running full out right now, yes. the 15 minute startup period. This, uh, it's outputting very, very hot air. Um, this is actually a little uncomfortable to keep my hand in front of. So <laughs> I'm, I'm excited for some cold, uh, some cold weather camping. Yes. Uh, and I look forward to sharing some of that with you. I do know this form factor looks a little bit large, but keep in mind that with our other setup, we had that, that toolbox, that case that the unit was in, but we also had that big diesel fuel jug, yep. and then we also had that Tupperware tote. I'm able to use the lid of this toolbox to keep all those accessories in. Yep. So this is completely self-contained, and as far as a square inch or square feet, this is actually considerably smaller, yep. and it capitalizes on a height that I already have in the bed of my truck. So I never wanted to store that heater vertical. Right. We kept it flat. It actually took a lot of real estate. This is gonna take less real estate in the bed of our and truck. And we don't have to disconnect it. And yeah, it's, it's ready to go. Basically, yes. the only thing we have to do is pop the exhaust tube on yes. uh, and then hook our three inch duct up and throw it in the tent. Bob's your uncle, we've got heat going. And I actually, this fired up a lot faster, yes. uh, it seemed to, than the, than the diesel heater. So uh, we'll, look, uh, we'll look forward to seeing you out very soon. We've got an yes. overlanding trip coming up. So you'll see this uh, getting some action because it's still in the 30s regularly, <laughs> yeah. uh, even during the day. So at night, it's colder than that. Uh, yeah, I'm going to wrap up with um, some detailed photos yep. and just sort of let those scroll. And uh, that's it. Uh, thanks for following along. I know this was a very different video. Yep. Hope you, hope you, um, you enjoyed or you find it. <laughs> um, that's it. Bye-bye. We'll see you.